Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 2125. Hello, it's Mike Matthews. The show is called Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a show where my name is Mike and I do a show. It's daily, don't you know? I try so hard to bring it to you every day. My name's not Ted or Fred. And I'm not dead because I'm talking to you right now. And I talk. And my podcast... Mike's Daily Podcast. ...is found on Twitter and on Facebook at Mike Talks. But I don't believe in TED Talks. Mike's Because... Daily... They're usually... Podcast. Annoying people. Yeah! And here's what... I, this is, does this happen to you? Have you ever watched a TED Talk? Let's just say someone says, you've got to watch this TED Talk. This is so good. This person believes in blah, 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 blah. And you go, who? What? Who is that? They did what? They invented Airbnb. Okay. All right. It's usually these unknowns. And then you get occasionally Elon Musk or somebody and they talk. Okay, that's cool. But these people get on stage that I have never heard of ever and I don't think 90% of the people out there have ever heard them just because they got a billion downloads of some video they did or vi- they went viruses all they went virusal is what they did they got all virusy and they went on with the virus they got all coronaviral and they talked about this stuff about stuff that you know, whatever oh my gosh what they said was groundbreaking oh my gosh it really changed my life you got to watch this mike i don't know i don't and then i watched the 10 15 30 minutes or whatever and i'm not changed my life hasn't been changed i'm still in the unhealthy range <laughs> thank you quest diagnostics for telling me that and here's today's podcast picture I'm in the unhealthy range Because you know what? My waist got bigger Uh Uh-oh Oh Oh, no Oh gosh What happened there? I'll tell you what it is It's that I don't walk to and from BART anymore Because my lovely lady friend's like You can't go on BART You'll get the coronavirus if you go on BART But what if I wear a mask and I wash my hands Oh my hands smell so nice Because I wash them all the time And I put all that wonderful disinfectant stuff And sterilization stuff on it No you can't go on Because you'll get get the coronavirus You can't go on So I'm going to get unhealthy with bad heart health I know Basil And I used to walk you And I had good heart health with you But then Degenerative myelopathy Canine degenerative myelopathy K- Canine C D G M Wait no that's not it C G M You know what I'm not even going to justify it with an acronym Or whatever um, or an anagram Or anything <laughs> I'm just going to say It was terrible and I wish my dog was still here Any rate And Basil I'm sure agrees But he and I walked When he could walk we walked everywhere Around the Bay Area And I was probably healthy because of that But then within the past year And he couldn't walk so much And I was carrying him with a harness in his back legs That, well, maybe I stayed in shape doing that But we didn't walk too much, he and I But I guess when we did walk It was so strenuous for me It helped me stay in the healthy range And now he's gone And now I don't take BART And I really need to Because I think it forced me And I talked about this in previous podcasts It's best when you You can stay healthy If you put put it in your way to be healthy Like you've got to walk From this point to this point It forces you Or you ride your bike Or something You know, you force it I don't think getting a gym membership forces you Especially nowadays when gyms aren't open Or gyms are suing to try and reopen But I have always thought that gyms Are a complete con because they they get your credit card number And then they don't ever cancel You can't, you go, I don't want to go to this gym anymore Tough, we're still going to deduct $80 a month out of your credit card Out of your bank account, whatever It's a total sham So my point is, don't use the gyms Go and make it, put it in your way 
to make the walk happen. That's my little TED talk, my little mic talks for you. I hate TED talkers. Cannot stand it. That is the only real reason to get as far away from the Bay Area as possible is because of TED talkers. And that wonderful NPR podcast Oh my gosh It gets more downloads Than anything on the earth Except for Joe Rogan Who's got his own Little controversy himself That TED Talks The only thing good About that show Is that they don't They only give you A little bit of the TED Talk And then the rest of it Is the guy Guy His name is Guy Guy Roz Guy Roz hosts the show Hey Your parents are creative Oh but your name is odd enough So that you can get on An NPR show Notice NPR never hires anybody with a normal name It's got to be, uh, not a normal, but a boring name No boring names allowed You can't be like, uh, hey, I'm Mark Smith That's a boring name That's the first thing I could think of, Mark Smith Sorry to all you Mark Smiths out there But they want something with an interesting name With a name that you haven't heard on the radio before Guy Raz. Lakshmi Singh uh, Cynthia Pajoli They want an odd name So Guy Rod's got the big part of being the TED Talks guy And then also how things work I think is the other thing he does Or how I made this Or how, how I murdered your mother No that was something we talked about last show How I met your mother How I met How no, how how to get away, get away with murder was the show I've been watching lately. Which yes, I watched one more episode. I'm one more away from the f- end of the season, and I know it's going to end on a season finale on a on a cliffhanger, and I'm going to have to watch the next season. And I hate it. You treat me like an addict. Stop it. We talked about that last show. So, but that's the only reason to get away out of the Bay Area is TED Talkers. Because they just are annoying. And, and the people, of course, that go to see the TED Talkers, they know who that TED Talker is. So they're applauding and they're laughing after everything they say. They, oh, what he just said, what she just said, groundbreaking. Oh, and I'm just, I, I watch it going, I don't get any of this. It's, it's elitist. It's, it's douchey ish. Is that a word? I think it's French. I think I just said a French word. Is that true? At any rate I think uh, My hand smells really nice right now And I think it's time to go outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10 today The last place on earth Go outside here Ruth Bader Ginsburg died I did not know she had pancreatic cancer I don't know I mean she got Really, she got to a good age I would like to get to the age she got to I don't see why it was a surprise that she died I mean, pancreatic cancer, very hard to beat I lost an aunt to pancreatic cancer Patrick Swayze died of it However, so I guess it's all What's Trump going to do? What's Trump going to do? What's Trump going to do? And are we going to have hypocritical Mitch McConnell Who blocked when this last time this happened When um, Scalia died uh, He would not Mitch McConnell would not let Obama During an election year Get um, What's his name? Garrett Gard, Garrett Gar- Garrison Mr. Garrison uh, That guy in Gor- Not Gorsuch That's the one that eventually got in We'll look that up at some other point Maybe it'll just pop into my head If the Lord is willing At a campaign rally today in North Carolina President Donald Trump Left no doubt about the gender Of his forthcoming choice for the Supreme Court It will be a woman Okay, here's another bit of the hypocrisy In the, in the political world And I know you don't listen to this podcast For political talk And I do not want to do political talk But I And This is the only thing That drives me crazy 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 about politics Is the hypocrisy And so You have Two things happening here First Trump's saying there's going to be a woman In that position 
Okay, didn't Joe Biden just get completely lambasted by the right because he said my vice president is going to be a woman? My best vice presidential choice and of color. And they go, oh my gosh. And now Trump is doing the same thing. And and what's the right going to do? Oh, he's so progressive. Oh, he's so smart. Oh. Okay, and back to Mitch McConnell, who completely stood in Obama's way for a Supreme Court nominee and would not let, and even in, Obama even put someone in there that even was like a little bit moderate, you know, that wasn't completely on the left, was had a lot of right leanings. He said, this is perfect. This, pers- this person is perfect. You, There's no way you can't approve him. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell said, oh, no, we can't do this during an election year. Oh, we can't do an election year. <sighs> yes, he talks like that. Deal with it. So... Now we got the same thing Only this time Mitch McConnell's gonna be Yeah Let's get someone in there Election year Oh did I say something About election year at one time Oop Alright well at any rate We got uh, So Supporters chanted Fill that seat Fill that seat Because Trump supporters Like the three word thing Lock her up Lock her up Fill that seat Fill that seat Trump's Trump Trump We'll call him Trump Throw in a different Vowel in there Trump said he did not have a nominee yet, but would make his choice next week. We have numerous women on the list, he said. Amy Coney Barrett, a federal appellate court judge, has emerged as one of the front runners to fill the seat left by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, Barrett, who is 48, was on the short list in 2018 to replace retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy when Trump on Saturday called her very respected Ultimately selected Justice Brett Kavanaugh And we know how that went Ugh. Please don't listen to the podcast I did during that time Oh, I was all messed I was so I was beside myself And Lindsey Graham particularly irritated me The sources note That Barrett has been vetted And is a known quantity Given her 2017 confirmation To sit on the U.S. Court of Appeals In the 7th Circuit Based in Chicago Trump also said his, if Republicans thought She performed well in That venue And defended herself Against allegations That her religious beliefs Would color her legal judgment Diane Feinstein Told her The dogma lives loudly within you And that's a concern Barrett responded, it's never appropriate for a judge to impose that judge's personal convictions, whether they arise from faith or anywhere else on the law. Let's see how that goes if she continues with that. So, yes, the other thing is that the French economy minister... Um, The coronavirus infections tipped the scales again in France today With nearly 13,500 new infections in 24 hours And there was something about Pope Francis Saying that the vaccine Should be given to poor countries To fight Well we have no vaccine at this point But when it is found So yes that's the latest there Judge Merrick Garland There we go Garland Oh I hope At some point We Everyone's You know We we have such short Memory Spans Here In the world of Politics And celebrities And And you know We Those who Don't remember history Are doomed to repeat it One other thing I'd like to throw out there Is that somebody who is a parent I talked to yesterday A father of two 12 year olds And he is not happy That schools are remaining closed Until mid-October where he lives And he said that his two 12 year old daughters Are just They're not happy They're not They're they're Acting kind of depressed Because they miss Meeting their friends Seeing their friends In person And he is not This guy I know He is not He's a smart guy 
does not like the whole Zoom thing and these classes based on Zoom. And, and kids have figured out ways to completely turn that off. Even though they're logged into the Zoom classes, they're watching other stuff, they're on their phones, they're not paying attention, they're goofing around. In a classroom atmosphere, the teacher has the power to go over and say, hey, listen up. Although I was talking to someone who used to be a teacher and she got out of it. This was just last weekend. She told me, because I was telling her about how, you know, millennials are pretty wrapped up with their smartphones. And while you're trying to teach them something, they're wrapped up. And she goes, oh, yeah. And she taught at a high school. And she said, I couldn't take their phones away. The parents would come down on me. She goes, everything I tried to do to get that class into some kind of semblance of order, I had to fight a parent along the way. She goes, it was too much. It drove her, it, it ended her career in teaching. Now, somebody else told me that she knows a teacher who taught her entire life, entire career, and when she retired, she got this special pension that gives her $10,000 a month for the rest of her life. And this person said to me, that's ridiculous. Parents, uh, Teachers don't deserve that But then hearing what this other person Who no longer is a teacher said I understand it It makes sense I mean The, the battles they fight The wages The wars waged Etc So To wrap it all up here At Cafe Anyway Somewhere in Podcaster Valley And talking about my mom She's in Daytona Beach Was I talking about my mom? Yeah okay It was my mom that said that about teachers But she said that Uh to me recently And this picture is not recent This is from three years ago When I was visiting my mom In Daytona Beach And these birds But you hear some birds In the background here On Mike's Daily Podcast These birds were just Sitting under my mom's car Looking up And I don't know They're very interesting birds They're Floridian birds Not the type of birds I see in California And they were just Staring up at the Front of My mom's car Underneath, They were looking at, you'll see this picture and go, what? Yeah, this happened three years ago around this time and see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. And we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Let's say hi to some people. Hi, Mike. It's Pity the Brood. How you all doing? And to this cradle fiddle player tell you what. What? Birds are strange. And I think Trump should put a judge in there that's a woman. Who believes in her convictions and has her convictions sway all of her judgments. Okay, look who else is here. Hello, Mike. I make the least troop be handsome right now. It's always good to drink your root beer. Drink it now, I'll cut you. I'm going to drink it right now so you don't cut me. And I will tell you that next show, it'll be the wonderful Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. What do you think about all of this? Hypocrisy in Washington I know I can't I know it's nothing new I know I can't change it But it That is my thing Pet peeve 336mm daily 3 plus 3 equals 6mm As in Mike Matthews daily As in what this podcast tries to be Let me know And Yes Madam Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley Next show I think this show is good I think it, sa- it said what it needed to say I think it said it And it didn't say it at a, at a TED talk oh, oh, oh. Please Meanwhile say, I, Just be thankful that we have clear skies again Kind of Actually wait we don't have clear skies Shoot When will we have clear skies again Ah, Some bugs me Take it away A-frame Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, hey, hey, and don't forget that tomorrow, Sundays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can catch me on the website. The website called kkdv.com. It's also on radio.com, the app. 
But if you listen to that website and the listen live stream on there, you can hear my show. I'll be on from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, every Sunday, kkdv.com. And there's another link as well at mikesdailypodcast.com.